Welcome to Everlasting Talk. Hello, welcome to Everlasting Talk. This is yours ever. Today on the biography series, we're talking about Vlad the Impaler. Before we get started, make sure to follow Everlasting Talk on YouTube, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitch, and Twitter at Everlasting Talk. Let's get started. Uh, Vlad the Impaler was the ruthless ruler of Wasilia in the 15th century, now known as Romania. Inspiration for uh, Dracula, actually. Born in 1431 in the town of Sigorogra, I can't say that, sorry, which was the was at the time part of the Kingdom of Hungary. Vlad was born Vlad the Third Dracula or Dracili. Uh, I think it depends what the, how they say it in Romanian. Uh, Vlad's father, Vlad the Second, was a member of the Order of the Dragon a chivalric order founded to defend Christendom against the Ottoman Empire, who were Muslim or Islamic. This would be, this would impact Vlad the Impaler's life later on, um, see himself actually be a defender of Christianity uh, himself against the Ottomans. Vlad's childhood was dominated by political upheaval, as he and his brother Radu were kidnapped and held hostage by the Ottomans for several years. We don't know how many, but I know it's definitely a lot. Uh, while in captivity, Vlad developed a strong hatred for the Ottomans, which influenced his later acts as king of Wachilia uh, against the Ottomans. Uh, during his time of imprisonment or captivity, uh, Vladislav II, a rival claimant to the Wasilia throne, killed Vlad's father in 1448. Uh, the following year, Vlad and his brother were released from captivity, and Vlad launched a series of raids against Vladislav and attempted to recover the throne for his family and also get revenge. Uh, by 1456, Vlad, uh, the Impaler, successfully uh, took the crown, and his reign was marked by a brutal campaign against the Ottomans and r rival Wasilian nobles who supported Vladislav. Um, impalement, impalement, <laughs> impalement was Vlad's favorite method of execution, in which um, future uh, listen to discretion advice. He would uh, gra they would get a pointed spike. And send it through the victim's body alive, causing a slow and painful death. So that he would use that as an intimidation tactic, um, you know, for his enemies. So while Vlad's uh, tactics were cruel, it was also very effective in uh, staying in power and defending Wasilia from external threats. So, like I said, he would go ahead and uh, make sure to leave the bodies out in the field. So nobody else has the same idea to go ahead and conquer them. So there's definitely something uh, different there. Uh, he is recognized in fortifying the country's defenses, establishing a central government, and encouraging trade and industry, which helped the which helped the uh, country grow and became very successful. Um, but uh, not all good things could last. Vlad's rule ended in. 1462, when he was overthrown by the Wasilian nobility that that um you know he didn't like before, and was forced to flee to Hungary. Uh, eventually, he would reclaim the throne in 1476, but he was killed in a battle against the Ottomans on December 14, 1476. But there's also a dispute that he died after the New Year, so. There's a dispute that he died like in January 2nd or 3rd of, of 1477. Uh, so yeah, it's very uh, it's debated among uh, among historians. Uh, despite his gruesome reputation, Vlad is a national hero in Romania because um, because uh, of his uh, ideals to protect the kingdom and protect the way of life of Romania and Christianity. Uh, his legacy is celebrated in literature, art, popular culture, which includes Bram Stokes' uh, novel Dracula, which was inspired 
on some of Vlad's life. Obviously, like with Dracula, you know, it's a fictional character, but Dracula's been on, you know, it's been around for so many years, you know, so many movies, um, you know, there's uh, so many things based on that. So obviously there's no <laughs> proof that Vlad the Impaler, I know his name is Vlad the Impaler, but his actual real name is Vlad the Third Dracula, actually drank blood and, you know, you know, so that's just fiction, but he did speak. He did. He did cause a lot of death um, and bloodshed, according to some historians or estimate. Some, you know, some historians the estimates are that more than eighty thousand people were killed during his reign in power. So that includes impalements. So that's a lot of people, especially the the actually the battles against the Ottoman Empire. Um, Vlad the Impaler was a complex figure who's. Uh, Brutal actions were motivated by a desire to defend his country and faith. Although he his methods were ruthless, they were effective, and he's still a hero to Romanian people. Yeah, Vlad the Impaler is a controversial character or in history because you know he did do the things to help protect his country, but at the same time he did it such in a ruthless way. He's, you know, he's still known to this day. Obviously, the, he, his his name is the Impa Vlad the Impaler, so that gives you something of a context of history and what he brought to history. Um, I know this one is a little shorter than most, um, but yeah. So, but I definitely, it's definitely important to know who he is, especially with Dracula. I mean, you've seen Dracula and everything, and <laughs> I mean that character is still around to this day in what movies today, and there's. You know, he's tons of movies. I wish I could, like, name them off. But, um, yeah, I mean, Vlad the Impaler is still a very popular figure in history. Um, his legacy, you should learn that, obviously, his legacy is Dracula, you know, the character. Um, his legacy is that he's still a national hero to for many people in Romania because of what he brought, like I said, to the table. He, he effectively kept Romania uh, together. And, you know, kept it a country united, uh, unlike, you know, other forces out there. The, you know, the Ottomans were right on their borders. So at any time they could have been invaded and the way of life could have been changed. Um, yeah, it's surprising he went out in a battle, but he went out fighting. So, yeah, he, his legacy is that no matter what, you you know, you got, if you have certain beliefs or certain um you know, attitudes always protect that, protect, you know, if, uh, protect, uh, your, um, country as, you know, when you can, obviously at this time, uh, he, it was his faith that kept him going and effective. Obviously it's kind of, uh, weird that, he, I mean, estimates will be like 80,000 that he committed so much, uh, you know, bloodshed, but he did it for his faith and to protect his people and yeah, I mean, uh, obviously everybody has their own opinions, but you could definitely look up more about him, you know, whenever you can. Obviously, um, like I said, I will do movie recommendations and uh, book recommendations, but, you know, just get Bram Stoke's novel on Dracula, watch a Dracula movie and be like, some of that life is part of, obviously nothing with the stick in the heart or nothing like that. But yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for joining me here at Have Alice and Talk, uh, you know, See you at the next one. The next one we're gonna next time um, we're gonna do Ho Chi Minh, uh, one of the most influential, controversial figures in history, in modern history, of of Vietnam. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Check me out on social media and have a good one. Make sure to follow us and thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Everlasting Talk. For more content, follow us on Twitch. Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Everlasting Talk. Thank you.